These are the best free-to-play first-person shooter games that are actually worth playing. First on the list is Iron Sight. This game reminds me a lot of Black Ops 2 and is one of the few games that I've played that is actually starting to get close to feeling like Call of Duty in terms of gameplay, polish, and features. Iron Sight's also been out for a while so it's the perfect time to play it because there's so much content in the game it's insane. With 25 assault rifles, 16 SMGs, 9 sniper rifles, and 5 LMGs, each with unique attachments and camos to grind and unlock. There are also 23 maps to play and these maps look awesome. I want to showcase some of the maps on screen right now because how the maps look is such a big part of what gives the game its character and I think you'll see why this game reminds me of Black Ops 2 so much. The semi-futuristic setting is just presented so well here with interesting, colorful, and unique map designs, clearly inspired by Call of Duty without completely ripping them off. You also have all of the core game modes you would want like Team Deathmatch, Free For All, and Search and Destroy. Now this game doesn't have a campaign mode, but there are a couple of missions you can do as single player that are pretty simple, but give you a good feel for the game if you're just jumping in for the first time. Overall, I highly recommend more people try this game out, and I'm extremely surprised more content creators aren't talking about it. Next we've got Shatterline. With a futuristic and imaginative theme, this game definitely brings something unique to the table. An alien race known as the Crystalline have arrived on Earth seeking to consume the planet in their conquest to dominate every species in the galaxy. This game has two main features on offer, with both a PvE expedition mode and a multiplayer. In Expedition, your mission is to drop into a crystalline infected area, complete objectives, loot materials, and extract safely, bringing all the data and materials back to be studied so you can better fight against the crystalline and save Earth from domination. One feature they've added that gives this game mode a ton of replay value and depth is a skill tree for each character. By collecting resources like shards, spores, and energy cores during your expedition, you can then spend those on upgrading your character's abilities, making you more powerful each time you drop back into the combat zone. Now jumping into multiplayer, you're greeted with all of the characters in the game who each have their own unique set abilities, much like Black Ops 3, 4, or Apex Legends. You also have access to a long list of weapons to progress through and unlock as you play. While the leveling system may feel a bit slow, there is always something to keep working towards while you play, which is something that seems to be missing in the first person shooter genre from AAA Studios. As far as game modes on deck, you have your classic team deathmatch, domination, and hardpoint, but a really fun game mode that takes place on larger maps is a game mode called Escort. One team needs to guard a convoy containing valuable crystalline resources through checkpoints and ultimately to its final destination. The other team's job is to stop you from succeeding. This game mode is also the core of the new ranked experience they've introduced and is definitely a good competitive game mode. Now unfortunately at the time of this recording Shadowline is only available on PC, but they've expressed numerous times that they are working on console support. This game absolutely deserves a bigger audience, but doesn't quite have the marketing to bring awareness to the game that it needs. So if you're on PC or it comes to console when you're watching this video in the future, definitely download this game and give it a try. If you're enjoying the video so far, do me a favor, drop a like on it. It really does go a long way to supporting the channel and subscribe for more first person shooter content. Up next, we've got a game that is essentially a clone of Modern Warfare 2019 with extremely fast paced and wacky movement. Combat Master is a game I didn't expect to play or even like because it was originally a mobile game that got ported over to PC and released on Steam for free. If you take the game for what it is, there's no denying that there's fun to be had here. While this game doesn't quite deliver a AAA polished experience, it's a good game to load up, have some fun, and just not take too seriously. One thing I have to give this game credit for is a completely unique game mode they've created called Combat Master, which I assume is where they got the name for the game. The Combat Master game mode combines some of the aspects aspects of Battle Royale with a free-for-all like respawn game mode. You spawn in with just your fists and need to find loot crates around the map for things like weapons, ammo, and armor. This game mode is a ton of fun and definitely keeps the game feeling fresh. And what could make it even better is if they developed maps specific to this game mode as sometimes the open sightlines make it a little bit difficult to safely find loot. Overall, if you haven't played this game, it's definitely worth a download and at the bare minimum, you'll have a few hours of fun. Next, let's jump back into Halo Infinite. Now a few months ago, I wouldn't have put this game on any list with the title Worth Playing. But after the changes and updates to the game we've gotten in August, I think it's worth another try. At the very least, it will definitely keep you occupied for a few afternoons. If Halo Infinite would have launched in this state, it might have been praised as one of the best Halo multiplayers ever. 
If you're like me and you're one of the people who tried the game when it first came out and weren't happy with it, now is the time to jump back in. With numerous bug fixes and updates giving the game better performance, more content, as well as improved sliding mechanics, the game is finally starting to look like what it should have been during launch. 343 seems to be rolling out consistently good updates that actually fix the game and deliver content and changes that the fans actually want. If this is any indication of how the game will be handled going forward, you might just find yourself grinding this game for weeks to come. The next two games we're going to cover at the same time because they're very similar and are both inside of Roblox. Now hold on, stick with me, I know what you're thinking. Really? Roblox? I know, I know. I thought the same thing too. And then I played them. These two games are Frontlines and Riotfall. Both of these games are surprisingly fun and packed with more features than you'd expect. Both offer a variety of weapons as well as a gunsmith-like system to customize your weapon attachments and player perks. There are also camos to grind as well as a proper leveling system giving you things to unlock as you play the game. Riotfall even has an excellent after action report showing you things like experience gained, attachments, and camos unlocked. Both of these games have decent maps, and I'm curious to see how they continue to improve their map design as the developers better understand the flow of the gameplay. One of my favorite things about Frontlines is the fluid and fast-paced movement. You don't feel like your character is wearing a pair of cinder blocks for shoes, but is also much more tame than the movement in something like Combat Master that we talked about earlier. While both games have great gunplay, Riot Falls excels in its gunplay and is surprisingly fun to quickscope in. To be honest, it feels a little bit like I'm playing the original Modern Warfare 2 from way back in 2009. Last on this list, we have an honorable mention, X Defiant. This game hasn't launched yet, but this game has so much potential and a lot of people still don't know about it. X Defiant is a new free-to-play arcade shooter that aims to bring back the traditional Call of Duty experience with their own twist, led by the former executive producer from Infinity Ward, Mark Rubin. Bringing together all of the factions from different games like Far Cry 6, Watch Dogs 2, The Division, and Splinter Cell, each faction has its own unique abilities similar to games like Black Ops 3 and 4. As far as gunplay goes, I think X Defiant almost nails it. With a few things needing tweaked and smoothed out from the beta, I'm sure the game will find a good balance over time. A lot of people are dubbing this game the Call of Duty killer, but let's be real, nothing will ever kill Call of Duty, and that's okay. X Defiant doesn't need to end Call of Duty to be a successful game. It just needs to serve the community of people that enjoy it. Mark Rubin has been fantastic when it comes to communication about the game via his Twitter account, and if you're interested in staying up to date, I'd give him a follow. And while you're over there, go ahead and follow me on Twitter too. I'm curious to see how X Defiant unfolds once the game is released because they have a really unique opportunity to challenge AAA studios. I think they need to really decide how they're going to position this game in the market by deciding if they want to appeal to casual gamers or go down the esports route. I personally think the esports route is the best direction with this game because it's fundamentally competitive with a longer time to kill, character abilities widening the skill gap, and a ranked mode. With very minimal marketing behind this game, going the route that Apex Legends took by establishing a massive esports scene could really help grow the game. Not to mention, they've been very vocal about having no skill-based matchmaking in public matches. If you want to dive deeper into the topic of skill-based matchmaking or why realism is ruining first-person shooter games, click on one of these two videos.